Next June will mark 70 years since the U.S. government executed American citizens Julius and Ethel Rosenberg for giving state secrets to the so Soviet Union. Some Twitter users have drawn comparisons between the Rosenbergs and the DOJ's investigation into classified documents taken from Mar-a-Lago. And even one, one even suggested that former President Trump should meet Julius and Ethel's same fate. Joining us now to weigh in is co-host of the Useful Idiots podcast and host of the Katie Halper Show, Katie Halper. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So uh, what was, uh, what's the news on uh, the, the reference to the Rosenbergs? Uh, so my, I gather there was kind of a, a resistance dem saying, well, the Rosenbergs met this fate for, uh, you know, for having documents they shouldn't have had. What about Trump? Is that? Is yeah, that what the I mean, what happened is? was that I was on Twitter and I saw that the Rosenbergs were trending, which was I, I thought was curious. So I checked out why and I was bombarded by really disgusting images and calls for uh, executions uh, and what was scary about it was it wasn't just randos on Twitter who were doing that. Um, but even you had historian Michael Beschloss, who is uh, an NBC historian. He's their presidential historian. Uh, he's written books. He's the presidential historian for, MS for NBC. He's also uh, the host of Fireside History at, uh, on Peacock, and he's a PBS contributor. And he tweeted out back in August, Rosenbergs were convicted for giving U.S. nuclear secrets to Moscow and were executed June 1953. Now, he tweeted this in August. That wasn't obviously... Uh, an anniversary or commemoration of anything. This is clearly people are trying to, I would say, uh, a couple of things are happening. One is that this was a dark day in history. The execution of the Rosenbergs is something that's highly problematic, something that was condemned at the time. There were protests all across the country. This should not be a legal precedent or any kind of historic guide for uh, action. It should be something that's an um, uh, like an embarrassment and a stain on the already very dark American history that we have in this country. But uh, but haven't those protests not aged, I think, entirely well? Because, I mean, there was a lot of, they, they, so those, those were claims that they were actually innocent, and we know that they were not well, innocent. No, what, he, what we know is that they, their, convic their trial was based on perjury by uh, Ethel Rosenberg's brother, uh, Julius Rosenberg's brother-in-law. We also know that the things that they were convicted of, they were not guilty of. So there was low level activity on the part of Julius Rosenberg, not Ethel. In fact, the prosecutor said, uh, one of the prosecutors told a congressional committee that she uh, was not uh, guilty, but had to be given a quote, stiff unquote sentence. Uh, as a deterrent, and another prosecutor said there was, quote, insufficient evidence, end quote, to convict her, but she needed to be used as a, quote, lever against her husband. So they were hoping that this would cause Julia to talk. So but I thought the following the fall of the Soviet Union, it, it just, like, became overwhelmingly clear that, yes, right, the they did. Right, the the level of their involvement. So, yes, okay. they did some stuff, but they didn't do the things that they were convicted of, and, mo and no one really believes that Ethel did anything high level. So, yeah, Julius did do stuff, but not at the level with, uh, at which he was convicted. Also, it's worth pointing out that when they were working with this, when he was working with the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union was an ally uh, at that point. He was, uh, this was something that, again, I think most people, even if they think he was guilty of something, don't think that the death penalty was appropriate. And this is something that liberals used to think. I mean, this is what's really scary for me as someone on the left, is that this used to be a case of a never again. There were protests all across the, the world. The Pope uh, asked for clemency. Albert Einstein asked for clemency. Jean-Paul Sartre, the Nobel uh, award-winning uh, French writer, called it a legal lynching which smears with blood a whole nation. Your country is sick with fear. You are afraid of the shadow of your own bomb. The execution was really disgusting and gruesome. Uh, Ethel Rosenberg was, tr they, they ex you know, they pulled the, the they electrocuted her in the chair. Uh, right, three times. It, yeah. Then they yeah, realized her heart, removed her, realized her heart was still beating, had to strap her back in to do it. Uh, so this was a case, I think, of, of Cold War McCarthyite hysteria. And that certainly is how I think mature uh, people who, especially people who consider themselves enemies of Trump, should be seeing it not as a call for uh not as a kind of blueprint of, of what to that should be done and you know they were charged under the espionage act and of course we should point out the fact that 
Julian Assange has been charged under that. And this is, I think, another example of the, the real crime here was, I would say, the execution of the Rosenbergs. And uh, on a similar level, I mean, the real crime with what is, what is happening to Assange is what Assange exposed. Uh, we've seen again and again that the only people who are getting into trouble for the crimes exposed by WikiLeaks are the brave whistleblowers. So Assange is basically being, I would say, almost like slow motion executed. Certainly if the uh, the prosecution has its way, he will be dying behind bars. I, I don't think have it's fair to Assange to associate him with the, because in particular, because he told the public things we deserve to know about the criminality of our own government, that's, whereas that's the Rosenbergs. The analogy. I mean, the analogy here is the idea that you are able to have a judicial process that is corrupted by political incentives, where people are convicted not on the basis of what they did or did not do, right. but because of what people presume they did and what they want the public, like the end game to be. And this is, again, I well, keep bringing up my minority report, but we have, we have people screaming about due process when it comes to Kavanaugh, and, and, are, and rightly so. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that those claims in that case, you know, it was a, a public conversation doesn't implicate due process in the way a legal conversation does. So I think that that was a little bit of a, a bad choice of words. But generally speaking, due process is absolutely a value in a criminal context, the likes of which Donald Trump is in and the likes of which the Rosenbergs were in and the likes of which Julian Assange is in to actually make the state prove its case against you. You don't get to put people in jail because you think they might do something. You don't get to put people in jail because if you cannot prove that they did do something, we don't want to live under that kind of regime no but, but, right they, yeah and he, I think he did do, he people, did do it at, well he didn't what i don't know what Who, which year are we talking he did, about he, he julius did, rosenberg yeah. I, so I, I oppose i oppose the death penalty he did, yeah but he anyway. did something he didn't do the thing that he was charged with and everyone basically knows that and i mean either way the fact that they were going after ethel that should be disqualifying and taint, that taints the entire case the fact that they were going after this woman as quote unquote a lever against her husband so the whole case is obviously, I mean, I think in a, in a, in a just world that they would be uh, pardoned or exonerated, uh, pardoned. I agree, you know this, you're the jurist, but uh, if not exonerated, at least uh, she should have at least been. But again, I think that this is something that we, this is a, there's a neo-McCarthyite tendency that we're seeing among the very people who are critical of Trump for being kind of himself. I mean, he used to be a guy who was condemned for being a jingoistic, reactionary, uh, anti-leftist. And it's kind of ironic to see the very people who are condemning him using these tactics and embracing this thing. And of course, one well, I forgot to mention, one of the lawyers against uh, the Rosenbergs was, of course, Roy Cohn, who would then work for Joe McCarthy and then become mm -hmm. a friend of Donald Trump. So you really don't have to become a jingoistic reactionary Roy Cohn ally in order to own Trump. And this is the tendency that we're seeing. And it's also an attempt to associate Trump with Russia and collusion. And, you know, I think it's a really scary uh, moment. And we're seeing a lot of smearing, a lot of the kind of neo McCarthy guilt by association that we saw during the McCarthy era. So I think this is a scary example uh, for lots of reasons. And maybe you should just check where you are, uh, see if you're on the right side of history. People like Michael Beschloss and all the other resistance libs who are like clamoring to repeat a very dark moment of history. It's not mm. a good look. Well, thanks, Katie, as always, for your historical perspective. Thank you. We'll have more rising for you right after this.